Tonight I will be using my own personal telescope setup to photograph a cloud of gas in deep space. They've called it the Cocoon Nebula and it lives in the constellation Cygnus. It's a hybrid between an emission nebula and a reflection nebula. So while it does have its areas where it glows in a bright pink, it also has areas where it's just space dust being lit up by nearby stars, which is pretty awesome. I photographed this object before, but last year I didn't get enough exposure time to make an image that I was proud enough to post. So this year I'm planning on finishing off the job. So come along with me for another astrophotography adventure in the backyard tonight as I photograph the Cocoon Nebula. I don't quite know how the weather is going to turn out tonight. I have five different weather apps on my phone and they tend to usually agree most of the time, but tonight is completely different. Three out of the five weather apps say it's gonna be completely cloudy the whole night starting at sunset, which would be right now. And then the other two say completely clear the whole night. I'm definitely gonna risk it on this one. I am not missing out on one of my last clear new moon nights of the summer. So even if it does cloud over tonight, I'm going to do my best to squeeze out whatever data I can from tonight. And if I don't get as much as I need to tonight, I have a couple other clear nights lined up tonight where I can get a little bit more data. On Fridays, we have our lawn care service team come through and mow both lawns. So on Thursday nights, I have to make sure that I am ready to get up and at them Friday morning and make sure that my telescope is moved off the lawn so they can come through. In this case, we hadn't had a clear smokeless night the whole weekend, so I had to get my telescope out of the bushes and get it all set up again. I try not to complain about this because I know a lot of you have to tear down your setups and move them inside every night, which I could not imagine having to do. It would be such a pain. But it is a little annoying to have to knock your mount out of polar alignment and spend 45 minutes every week getting yourself re aligned. It may sound like I'm exaggerating when I say 45 minutes. How long can it take to place Polaris in your reticle? Well, I can assure you that I'm not. I cannot see Polaris from where my yard is, so I have to use Nina's three-point polar alignment feature to get myself aligned. While we're on the topic of the trees in my yard, let's talk about where the Cocoon Nebula will rise and set. I tried to make the most out of this situation of having to knock my mount out of alignment by putting it in a new spot that is perfectly situated to photograph the Cocoon Nebula tonight. I used the app Sky Guide on my phone, it's a planetarium app, to get myself situated and figure out where the Cocoon Nebula will rise and set and put it in the spot where it'll set in the pockets of the trees so I can get the most amount of time possible. Between its compass features and its AR features, you really don't ever miss a beat when it comes to planning your night of astrophotography. I mentioned this a tiny bit a moment ago, but for once the moon phase is in my favor tonight. It's one of the only new moon nights I've been able to shoot this summer, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, in the pre-dawn hours, a thin crescent will rise above the eastern horizons, so I won't have to worry about that moonlight blocking out a lot of signal from my image. The bats are out tonight. They always come back in the summer around August, and it makes me happy to see them return. There's one right there. Wow. Keeping my yard protected from all the mosquitoes. I think the rest of them are in my shirt right now. I'm getting eaten alive out here. At this time of year, the Cocoon Nebula actually rises before sunset, which means that I have to get my setup focused and polar aligned ASAP to get imaging as soon as I can. I'm so excited to see that first sub-exposure roll in. Let's do this. Hold your breath. Off deep woods, as recommended by Orion Astro. It's rough out here. <coughs> Thank you. 
All right, it is about 9.45 p.m. right now and there isn't a cloud in sight. The only issue that's going on tonight is that there's a thin haze that's over the whole sky right now, so I can see a lot less stars than I normally would be able to. So it's reducing the amount of signal that I'm able to collect in a single sub exposure. Like I said before, this is one of the first new moon nights that I've been able to shoot from the backyard this summer so far. So I'll take what I can get but I am increasing my sub-exposure times from three minutes to five minutes to get a little bit more signal in each image, hopefully improving my final image's quality a little bit and put up a little bit of a fight against this haze. Overall, tonight's going really well. I've had a couple visitors in the backyard over the course of the night so far with a couple possums and I think a raccoon by our garbage cans, which have stopped by to say hi and keep me a little bit of company tonight. The wind has died down from what it was the last time I imaged with the temperatures fluctuating like crazy. So I'm really happy about that and that means my guiding is back to normal. I'm really happy with the way the sub-exposures on the Cocoon Nebula are looking right now, and I'm pretty confident I'll be able to get a great image for you guys at the end of the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and that you enjoy the image of the Cocoon Nebula that you're about to see. But most of all, I hope that I've inspired you to go outside and get a look at the stars yourself on the next clear night. And with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. Clear skies.